What's going on guys? Car Review Guys here. My name is AJ and today we are back with the 2024 Kia Carnival. This is the highest trim level, which is the SX Prestige. And we are going to be doing the full review today. We are going to start with a little cinematic and then we are going to start with the exterior stats figure stuff I think you guys would like to know. Look at the interior, which is pretty neat, especially on the back seat. And then we are going to be taking it on a drive. Next video, five things to love, five things to improve. So without further ado, let's jump right on into it. Let's roll. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that cinematic. Now let's start with some of the stats and figures on this 2024 Kia Carnival. This Carnival has a V6 pushing 290 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque. Transmission is an eight speed automatic with a drivetrain of front wheel drive. Curb weight is around 4,581 pounds, which is gonna be pushing this Carnival from zero to 60 in about seven seconds. Your MPG is going to be sitting at 19 city, 26 highway with a combined average of 22. And then your gas tank size is 19 gallons. Now, vehicle dimensions, we are here looking at the side profile. Your length is around 16.9 feet and your width is going to be about 6.54 feet and your overall height is about 5.8. Ground clearance is around 6.8 inches. Now, pricing starts around $33,600 for the base. That is gonna be called the LX. Total of five trim levels available, and the tester today is around $49,480, including the destination charge. Now that we are here in the back, obviously, pretty simplistic, new Kia emblem, uh, not too bad. Now, if we come down here, you can simply just press underneath and up the lift gate will go. Here in the rear, there is a third row. Uh, it right now is uh, folded down below and you have plenty of space back here. I'll put some different numbers up here that are gonna show some of your different um, storage space. You can also even remove these two seats if you need to have all cargo. It does have keyless entry on both doors, as you can see there, which is kind of funny because it's one of the few Kias that actually has this, at least that I've had to date, and they're probably the closest door handles together. Now, the rear door is, of course, power. Before we step into the rear, I don't know if you can already kind of see back there, this one has the entertainment package, and just take a look before we get in here. This is what the seat can do, right? You can lay out, you've got the TV package, uh, and then this one, you can see, you can see the sliders. It can go a good bit forward. Um, so there is a lot of different um, <laughs> movements uh, for the seat. If you're new to my channel, I am five foot nine. I test getting every single vehicle. So let's go ahead and test the rear. There is a handle here if you so need it uh, again. The ground clearance really is not that high, so I don't think too many people are really going to need it. You got to duck a little bit for sure. And then we're in. Now, once you're in, super comfortable, a ton of room. And again, these seats adjust in so many different ways. So it's comfortable. Now that we're back here, let's talk about some of the different features. So let's go ahead and close the door here. Up on the door, you're gonna notice heated and cooled seats here for the second row. 
And again, if you want to lay back, you can definitely look like this seat here. It's, it's very comfortable. Like this is, I, I never thought, you know, being a supercar owner that I would ever even like remotely consider a minivan, honestly. Um, number one, this is probably the best looking minivan, like from the exterior wise, just personally. Second, this is insane. Like I am five foot nine. No one make fun of my pasty legs. I can almost fully extend. Like that's how close it is to fully extending right now. Like so much room back here. And of course, like I said, you got the TVs. Uh, I have not messed with these too much, but what I do know is you can also stream just like on a TV, you can mirror your phone basically. So you can just throw it up on the screen. And of course you can watch. You've got a few different chargers back here. You can see uh, you've got a hundred watt, which is basically kind of like a, a wall outlet uh, style. And then obviously old school. And then you've got some USBs right there. And then two cup holders. And there's also cup holders in the door. And then there's also a shade if you need a little bit more back here. And uh, it's all, pretty nice materials. This is actually a little bit harder here. It's not actually like the leather, like in the front. And then up here, it's also kind of the same as down here. It's kind of like a rubberized feel to it. The seats in this are a genuine leather and they are uh, definitely, they, they feel very quality and it makes sense that they are genuine leather. Up above, you're probably gonna notice, you're like, what is this thing? There are three different microphones and there is a little camera. I will show you that in the front here shortly. Definitely a pretty neat little feature, especially if you have little children. Over here, you do have your uh, own climate controls for the rear. Time to test the front seat, stepping in. Super easy, nothing to it, not a high step, and I really don't have to duck hardly at all, if any. Um, so definitely an easy vehicle to get in and out of. Now that we are in the front, before I forget, let's talk about those little cameras that were back there. So if we come to this screen and we hit the home button, there is this little uh, menu item here. It's called passenger view. You can click that. And once it loads, you can see, you can see right into the rear seat. And then if you hit talk now, those little, uh, it's basically gonna play your voice. So you don't have to talk any louder and it's going to project it to the rear. Um, again, if you have little kids, definitely a super nice feature. You, you know, you're not distracted. You're not turning around. You can just directly see and check on them right there. While we are on the screen, it's, pretty standard for any uh, Kia nowadays. It is super responsive. Um, you can have a split screen with the matte view. You can take it away. You don't have to have it. You can have the full view. Um, there's not too much more to talk about here. Pretty standard nowadays uh, for the most part. I guess while we're on the screen, the, the last thing that I do want to touch on is the camera. So there is a button right down here. This actually reminds me of the Kia Stinger having a little uh, menu bar here. Press that and now we can go ahead and take a look. Super clear cameras. You have the 360 over here. So high quality uh, in the tech world for Kia. Out in front of us, you will notice that it is an all digital uh, instrument cluster. Super nice, again, nice not to have analog or anything, so it feels really premium. There is no heads up display available. That is one thing that would be nice to have just because this has so many options, right? That would be uh, nice, but not a huge deal. Over on the left, we have memory seating. Uh, you have all your different door controls all the way down here. Window switches feel nice and premium, have little bezels. They don't wiggle or jiggle. They're nice and firm. And then you have power folding mirrors and of course, all of your mirror adjustments. Looking at the steering wheel very quickly, you have most of your media items on the left and over on the right, different uh, menus and also your cruise control. It has true lane centering, which is nice and it does stay dead center of the lane. Kia Hyundai Genesis is by far one of the best whenever it comes to that system. You do not have to have your cruise control set. 
uh, in order to stay dead center of the lane, which is a nice little touch. And then also it does have stop and go. So as far as the adaptive cruise control goes, having the stop and go is a nice functionality that I've read that many of you find that very important. For me, I don't use the stop and go function. I definitely use the adaptive on the freeway um, and it is very good and refined. Over in the middle, you have various different buttons that uh, are all touch sensitive. Down below here in this hole, it is a wireless phone charger, several different USBs. And the one thing the other reviewers have noted and I have noticed as well, there are no USB-Cs. Um, so I don't know if that's eventually gonna get that update. Again, not a huge deal, um, but it is something that as modern and as techy as this is, not to have the latest USB-C in this course, in this case, I should say, is definitely um, something that they could update eventually. Now, pretty standard gear shift, and then moving on down, you have some different drive modes, heated seats, cooled seats, heated steering wheel, parking sensors, and again, that is your camera button. Center console, it is leather as well. Pull it up, and it is a really good size. Up above, you've got Homelink. I don't know if the light is going to adjust. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, there is no digital mirror, which I do think that is one thing that's also missing with as techy as this is. And it would be definitely useful in the case of having obviously people or cargo in the rear. All LED lighting on the interior. The lights on the outside are obviously super bright as well. They're LED projection headlamps. Without further ado, I think it's time we take this Kia Carnival for a drive. Let's roll. As we get this 2024 Carnival SX Prestige out on the road, one of my first impressions on this is, to me, I don't love the look of a minivan. And this, to me personally, looks the least like a minivan out of any of them out there. Um, some people may agree, some of them may disagree. That's just my opinion, that was my take whenever I really first saw it. Honestly, this, this is not a vehicle that was on my list as far as like, you know, something I would want personally. However, even after driving it and spending some time and checking it out, like maybe, maybe one day it's in the cards. And I can definitely now understand why it sells so well and why so many people have these because it's practical right like there is so many use cases for this vehicle and as we get out here i will be explaining the ride quality as well the one thing that is missing on this as an option um not from like my tester but it is not optional at all right now is all wheel drive now i think that would be really really good if this thing was an all-wheel drive definitely plenty of power like it's got the v6 i press it you can hear the motor you're going it it's definitely responsive plenty of power in this vehicle speaking of noises like i said you can definitely hear the motor under full acceleration i am currently being uh, blinded just ever so slightly maybe that's hopefully not too much in the camera for you guys that eh, is a little bit whatever i'll just deal with it uh Long story short, uh, as far as noises go, you can hear the motor upon full acceleration, like I was saying, but road noise, actual tires and stuff, it's very maintained, it's really not bad. It, it's probably a, a little above average, um, I would say. And then as far as like hearing other vehicles, you really don't hear them. Uh, very, very good on wind noise, wind noise is really cut back uh, in this. Now, the other thing we always test is suspension with noise. We're gonna go over this cattle guard here like we do every week, every vehicle. So here we go. Suspension, definitely in the top percent of vehicles that I review, like it, that was, I hardly moved. So the fact that the vehicle is able to absorb that and not affect me, the driver, definitely impressive. As far as noise goes, again, towards the top percent, you're always going to hear it. I mean, I've driven, you know, $150,000, $160,000 vehicles, luxury vehicles over that. And again, you can definitely still hear it even in those. So it's not like you're ever going to drive over that and it's going to be silent unless, I don't know, maybe a Rolls Royce pulls that off. I don't know. Never driven one, but I've heard it's insane and not in the realm of this video. <laughs> kind of already mentioned um, 
The adaptive cruise control and the lane centering, definitely one of the best Kia Hyundai Genesis leading the industry in my opinion out of any and all manufacturers that I've reviewed on my channel. There's some others that are like second and third and pretty good for sure, but they are by far leading the industry as those go. The adaptive cruise control also has stop and go. Uh, so for those of you that find that important, it does have that. Also lane centering, you do not have to have your cruise control set. You can absolutely just turn it on and it's gonna stay dead center without doing anything. Now, with that said, you should always have your hands on the wheel. You guys know the deal, but if you're gonna drink a water, then hey, it's, it's definitely safer than driving with your knee. And it also actually over time, and there's gonna be some comments, it is what it is, if you're driving a long distance road trip, you can just lightly have your hand on the wheel and your wrist is not going to get any kind of fatigue if you have wrist problems like carpal tunnel or whatever. All right, let's test a little bit of the suspension in this minivan, huh? There's gotta be some body roll, I would assume. Let's take this at 25. Definitely some body roll. Definitely some body roll, right? Definitely expected, it's, it's not, I mean, it's exactly what I expected. I expected some body roll. That's what it should have in a minivan. Uh, but for a minivan, it's really not bad. Definitely acceptable. And no one's buying it to, to do some turns in this thing. So don't worry about that. More focus on the ride quality. And that is really good because this road right here, super noisy. And if I just be quiet for a second, You can hear it. I, I know you guys can hear it because I can hear it, but some vehicles that I take on this road, like e e like I literally have to talk louder uh, and I don't in this at all. So I am really impressed with my time with this uh, Kia Carnival. Uh, and then not to mention like how nice the rear seats are, heated seats, cooled seats, got the optional entertainment package back there with the TVs. It, it's just, overall you're it's hard to beat for the price right like you're under fifty thousand dollars with all of the tech features and ride quality that this has definitely something to consider if you have a bigger family or maybe you only have like two kids and you just want them to be able to ride nice or maybe you go on golf trips all the time with your buddies this is a great golf trip vehicle no matter what you may think Touching on blind spots very quickly, over to our left, this pillar is a little bit wider than probably standard, but there is blind spot monitoring. And over to the right, pretty good visibility as well. Don't see you having too much issues as far as visibility goes. The other thing that people are always asking are the different drive modes. So I am driving in what's called smart, basically learns your driving habits and that's what it bases it off of. So you have normal eco, sport and smart. Let's put it in sport very quickly. And my, my foot was in the exact same position, just changing it to sport, it started accelerating. So good programming there. As far as the steering goes, let's take off lane centering so I can actually feel it. Okay, and then let's uh, jump over again to normal instead of smart. Definitely tighter steering in sport which is pretty wild. I honestly really wouldn't expect that, um, again, in a minivan, but they have. Don't know 100% why, but it still allows you to have that functionality. Throttle response, much different. And eco, it definitely cuts it down um, to conserve on fuel. For everything else, uh, just comment down below. Maybe I'm missing something that you guys would like to know. Happy to respond. I try to respond to every single person. If I don't know, I'll reach out to my Kia representative. Um, yeah, if there's anything else, uh, just let me know. As always, I will catch you guys on the next one, which is going to be five things to love, five things to improve. Peace.